welcome, my children, to Regaling with Rachel. Now, as you can see, I have my book here of tales of which to tell you, my pupils. Now, I'm going to regale you with the tale of the cheese it fiasco. It was a nice day in Nashville, Tennessee at the Opryland Hotel. And on a trip of which only the most highly intellectual children could go on, had attended this hotel of the fanciest variety. Our two heroes were in the same hotel room together, Tess and Rachel. And these two individuals were feeling particularly lazy that night because they had been on a bus ride that took over two hours. And so our childrens that are on this trip decided to watch TV and eat snacks of which her mother had packed her. Her mother being Tess, her mother. Now, as the two were eating snacks, they were watching the TV. And on the TV, a commercial had sprang about. This commercial being of the mattress commercials. And so they're eating the snacks, the snacks of which are Cheez-Its. And they're eating these Cheez-Its. Rachel procures one from the box and goes, hmm, this commercial seems pecul peculiar because she questions as she watches this TV. She says, why did he get off the elevator, tell the elevator man he didn't need anything when there was only a mattress and a chandelier because there were no sheets on this bed or pillows. Tess then decides to say, as Rachel puts the Cheez-It into her mouth, Tess says, he wants to swing from the chandelier here. And that's when Rachel went <gasps> and inhaled the Cheez-It. The Cheez-It then laid flat in her throat as it closed her airways, leaving her unable to breathe. Rachel sprung out of the bed in a flash. And she doesn't normally do that because she is lazy as fuck. So Rachel decided she was gonna put her hands around her throat because that is the universal sign of choking. As any normal person would know, especially a girl who has been in Girl Scouts for a good majority of her life. This girl being Tess herself. So as Rachel is choking to death, the, her vision is fading to black as she is punching her abdomen and hugging her throat with her hands, clutching for those last breaths of life she thinks she's going to take. Tess says, don't puke on the floor. And in that very moment, our heroine pukes on the floor because the Cheez-It snaps in half, cleanly in half. As, and she knows this because she looks at the floor, at the spit up on the floor that she just caused and can clearly see this orange square transformed into two perfect rectangles. And as she's breathing, regaining her life force that is oxygen, she says, I had to! And Tess, full of bewilderment, says, huh? And Rachel, 
then went on a full-blown tangent because of the dumbassery that is Tess Robinette. And so, after Rachel had ranted to Tess Robinette about how she should know the signs of choking, how she should know I was, she was dying, she said, okay, we're gonna be best friends now because this happened before they were friends. And remarkably, these two heroes, I say heroes, really one was a hero, the other one was basically a hobo that just was in the background that didn't do sh to save someone's life. Really, that's, that's pretty, pretty good part of the story. I, I, I like it, personally. But anyway, I digress. Rachel decided she was gonna plop back on the bed next to Tess because she was like, you know what? I'm tired. I'm too tired. I almost died. That's what Rachel said. That she said that. So, she just lays on the bed. They keep watching TV. Rachel doesn't eat any Cheez-Its for over a year. She doesn't eat Cheez-Its again. But her brother was perfectly okay with that because Cheez-Its were his favorite snack. But anyways, I digress once more. Later that evening, Miss one of the supervising teachers of the trip, came to check on all the students in their hotel rooms. And as Miss comes in, she instantaneously saw this washcloth that was on the floor. And you may be wondering to yourselves, why was there a washcloth on the floor? Well, you see, Rachel felt bad that she had spit up on the floor. So, she tried to clean it up. She didn't do that good of a job, so she just kind of left the washcloth there as a warning to people that might step on it. So when Miss sees this, she's thinking the same thing. She's like, why is this washcloth on the floor? So, Rachel and Tess give each other a look for a minute, like... Crap, we're gonna have to explain why this washcloth's on the floor. We didn't think we were gonna get checked on because we're good kids, supposedly, on this intellectual trip. So, Rachel goes, Well, you see, I was eating a Cheez-It. Tess made me laugh. I didn't chew it. I just kind of inhaled the cheese it. Then Miss was like, "Oh, okay, so you." Yeah. And then Rachel's like, "Yeah." And then I said, or T Rachel said, "Tess didn't do anything to help me." And Miss was like, "All right." And then Miss left. So Miss didn't give any craps as long as I wasn't actually dead. Is what Rachel thought. Anyways. Rachel and Tess then somehow magically became best friends. And really, that's the only thing you need to gather from that story. If you want to become friends with someone, make them choke on their favorite snack food, and then make them hate that snack food, and then bond over it. The end.